Hi everyone, uh, this is Ernest Bonifas Makulilo and I'm so much happy today. And you know why? Because it's the topic I usually enjoy to talk to people. It is a topic about English proficiency tests. The emphasis is on proficiency. The emphasis is not about intelligence because some people get confused between intelligence and proficiency. English is not the measure of intelligence. We know that. Swahili is not the measure of intelligence. French is not the measure of intelligence. It's just the medium of just talking, instruction, all other ways. But that doesn't measure your intelligence if you speak English, if you speak French, Portuguese, Swahili, uh, Kihaya, any other native language you speak. It doesn't matter. That is not a measure of intelligence. So when you are going to apply for scholarships, I'm talking about more about scholarships for English-speaking countries, you will be required to take English proficiency tests. So some people, they usually, uh, unless I have applied for 10 universities, or I've applied for three universities, but every time I apply, I've been applying for five, three, four years, whatever, but I haven't got, to for, I haven't got any scholarship. I usually ask two questions. What's your GPA? What's your result? I mean, tell me your results. Apart from that, I'll ask you another question. Have you ever done English proficiency tests? If your answer is no, you haven't done it, means you have never applied it. Because if you apply for scholarship, you haven't taken the exam, 99.9% .9 of all scholarships require you to take the English proficiency test. Yes, there are few. They don't require. But if you are really serious looking for scholarships, you have to take the English professional test. It's no brainer. You have to do it. So, what is this test? And what does it measure? The test is the standardization. A standardized test to measure proficiency of the language. I know some people, they usually get upset. Oh, these people from Western countries, they are so discriminatory. They don't want Africans to go to Europe or America. That's why they put this test. No. They are going to give you 50,000, 75,000, 100,000 US dollar. Yes. They have to make sure that you speak their language. You can be able to write. So they have to test you. Why don't you say your country is discriminatory? To ask a question about your poverty when you are going to apply for loan or scholarships in your own country to continue for further education. They have to be like, I'm giving you if 50,000 in Tanzanian shillings is of a hundred million. This person is not your father. It's just someone else. So they have to make sure that you have everything. So it's not about being African or being Asian. It's just the how to eliminate the weak one. So if you are looking for scholarship, there is no shortcut to maturity. If you want to go to heaven, I repeat, if you want to go to heaven, you have to accept death. You have to, you have to, you have to accept death in the sense that you have to agree to die to go to heaven. If you want to, go to, to, to get a scholarship to go to Europe, to, go to, uh, to come to America, one of the ways is to get through scholarship is it to take the route of taking the test so that you can take you can get that scholarship you want their money follow their principles simple like that so there are two tests it's your choice to choose one there is a british version international english language testing system ielts put on the google search ielts you'll find it it is done under the British Council in any country you are. The fees for that exam is around 240 US dollar. If you don't want to do the British version, you can do American version. Test of English as foreign language, TOEF. T-O-E-F-L, TOEF. So you have to take one of the two. American version is 210 US dollar. You can just Google or just go to the eats.org slash tough. You'll find the sample 
test, practice test, even the software to practice, or you can do British one. Both the tests, they test the same thing, English proficiency, writing, reading, listening, and speaking, four areas. The difference is British, they give scores or marks out of 10. American, they give out of 120. So each section for American is a 30. So four section 120. British, they give you each section is out of 10. But in the end, if you get 6.5 and above, all universities, almost all, they will accept your results. Get the average of 6.5. But in American way, the problem is when you take the test, each university, they have their own score. Harvard will say, they will say, we want 100. MIT, they say, we want 110. Marshall University, they say, we want 65. Another university, they say, we want 75. So there is no, this is the pass mark. Each university, they'll put the whatever they want. But in most cases, try your best to get at least 75, 70 something and above. But if you get 75, many universities, they are into that 70 and above or 75 and above. So if you ask me, which exam should you take? British version, ILTS, or TOEF, which is American version? Just for the nature of the score, it will be better to take the British version. Because if you are not, you get 6.5, out of 10, nine or all 10 universities, they will accept 6.5. So your job is just to get 6.5. But the American version, if you take it, School A, they can say we want 85. School B can say we want 70. So it depends. So out of 10, you have at least 6 or 7, they will accept. But out of 10, 9, they will say we want 6.5. So the choice is yours. In the end, there is no which one is simple. Both the same. The same exam. But what I wonder, why people are getting scared of these exams? Because someone is saying, I have a scholarship group, or support scholarship, scholarship group. For over three years, someone says, oh, I'll do the exam. But everyone is sneaking away, is running away. But the same person is failing this exam. The same person has a bachelor degree. He did university examinations, physics, mathematics, political science, engineering. But why did you take the engineering exam courses? And you are going to fear tenses. You are going to fear in simple English examinations. So don't fear this exam. The exam is not going to measure your intelligence. The same exam you're going to do, if someone is in junior high school, which you call senior four or, or level, or junior high school, wants to come to America, or going to Europe, will take the same exam. You in form six, high school, senior six, whatever you call them, you are taking the same examination. If you are bachelor degree or coming to do we want to do masters, you are going to take the same examination. If you are masters, you are going to do PhD, you are going to take the same. They don't change examination. So the same exam you are going to do PhD is the same exam someone is do bachelor degree, you are taking the same exam. So they're not going to change. So this question will be like this way, for instance. Where do you prefer to live? Maybe let's say rural and urban area. Just like those simple essay questions while you are in secondary school or you are in high school. The question doesn't need to explain the very complicated reasoning. Like, they're not going to look, this is, this is a very good reason. They don't care about, about the economy of the country. If you're being urban, you have this. They don't care about that. What they care is very simple. If you're going to write your essay, I like it to live in urban because blah, 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 blah. And you say, they comes or they goes, that is grammatically incorrect. They don't care what kind of point you have. That is one, something like grammatical mistake, they mark there. If we say they will come, that is impossible. Like, what is that? So it's not about, the, it's not about how much you know the English. It's just the grammar. It's simple how you use the first reason, the second reason, third reason. How you go from one paragraph to another paragraph. How do you use the preposition? On top of that, however, those kind of 
salad in the in the food how are you going to use those one seasoning those is just like simple like that and this is very easy i can give the simple technique whether to be writing whether it will be speaking in the, this kind of test how are you going to pass they don't care about everything as i said it's just about how you use simple grammar how you use sentences very well so for those who are watching football or soccer you will see there is a big difference between African soccer and Western soccer. That's what I usually tell people. Never bet on any African team when he's playing against a European team. Because sometimes when we are in Africa, we, get, we, we lose our mind. Someone gets the ball from the goalkeeper, wants to run the ball, whatever, up to the end. Even the commentators in Africa, or even like someone in Mexico, they usually have had time to... To, 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 to talk about the game. It's just too much noise. But if you watch Real Madrid or Barcelona is playing, Xavi, Iniesta, Mascherano, bam, bam, tick, ta, 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 go. That's how it's easy. You cannot make him even for me. You put in Barcelona or Madrid. I'll be a good player because how? What are you doing? You get the ball. You give to Messi. Messi get the ball. Give to um. Give to to Suarez. It's easy. There is no too much complication. It's just like a draft. There is simple. So in English, it's the same way. If I want to say, to, let me give two examples. My name is Ernest Makurilo. I'm originally from Kigoma, Tanzania. I live in America. I like to eat salad and ugali and something like that. It's too much. We don't have we don't have a full stop. And that is the problem. Anyone is writing a sentence, just go to essay you have written. You'll find three lines or four lines is just one sentence. It's a very, very long line. Why? When you do long sentences, you are going to expose yourself to mistakes. The same way in the football, if you start running the ball everywhere, you are going to have mistakes. Just watch even NBA basketball. See how Golden State is playing. It's just Steph Curry, Damon Green. No one is just running with just basket everywhere. It's just like kind of that. So even if you want to, to avoid grammatical mistakes, my name is Ernest. Full stop. I was born in Tanzania. Full stop. I live in the U.S. So, full stop. So, you, I live in the U.S. You go back and say, I currently live. You just put a little bit of salad over there. I currently live in the U.S. But it was just I live in the U.S. You see? So, if you put a short sentence, you are not going easy. Subject, verb, object. Subject, verb, complement of subject. Those are the simple way. Simple grammar. Go back to the basics of so that sometimes you find someone in form one or high school can get higher score than someone with masters because you are too much thinking about those too much grammatical whatever long sentences. Don't find those good difficult words. Don't become like the professor of Kenya, Professor uh, Lumumba, some whatever. When he's talking, it's just like, what is this guy talking about? You are going to find a dictionary. People don't care about hard, difficult words. Find, see like Obama when he's talking. See like uh, all these famous people when they're talking in simple English. Even in standard, uh, someone who's in standard five can be able to understand. That's how you do English. Don't complicate. The difficult part I can explain to you in this kind of test is listening and reading. And I'll say why. Because many people in developing countries where the English is not the main language, we are not exposed to listening English frequently and English which you listen without seeing someone. Some people know English very well. They can speak it to one another. But I speak with you with my African accent. That is the difference from when you are wearing headphones and CNN is coming in your ear. That is a different story. You hear like Fox News coming to you another year. That is a different story, my friend. I remember. <laughs> Let me give you the funny story, first of all. I remember when we were brand new in America. They, they make, they, they, someone is calling you like, the really American is calling you because you are never used to hear 
English without seeing a person, you you just you have to find a, if your house, you have to turn off the TV, you turn everything off, you have to listen very, very careful. Like, yes? Oh, okay. But nowadays, after being for a long time, you are okay, you can watch TV, cooking, talking, it's just easy. But the problem is in Africa, we are not exposed to the English of Western accent without seeing a person. So we watch T uh, BBC, CNN, but you see something on the news. You watch the movie, you see someone is punching someone, obviously he's upset. So that is easy. But try, if you want to practice, close your eyes and listen to CNN. Listen to BBC Radio without seeing a picture, without seeing someone in the video. That's how we practice listening. And reading is another problem because many people are not exposed into reading for leisure. We just read because a certain novel because they have to take the examination. And at the university we are studying more, we are reading about academic text. So you have a time to read at you, uh, in your dorm, in the library, but you are not having a speed of reading novels. So in those kind of essays you are given into the test, you are given a very long paragraph. You have to read very quick. You have 20 questions, 25 minutes. So it's just like another war. So you have to practice to learn to read very, very quick and understand non-academic. That's why even like speaking, usually I usually tell people, if you want to know to prove that you, you are good at speaking, don't speak academic. Like, oh, imperialism is very exploitative. That is not English. Those are te technical terminologies, imperialism, exploitative, you put is, that is not English. Talk about Manchester lo lost the game against Liverpool, another team, just non-academic. Talk about love, talk about something like normal, easy stuff. That's how you can measure how comfortable you are to change the subject from this subject to another subject. So you need to practice a lot of listening. You need to practice a lot of reading. Writing is easy. Speaking is easy. The only thing is take short sentences. Even when you are speaking, make a pause. You will never make a mistake. That's how we do. So don't fear this exam. So many people, they say, oh, I'll do this exam next week. Let me prepare. Let me prepare until the year is over. The best way to prepare this exam Go and pay 210 for this test on, for instance, November 1st. Obviously, you are not going to lose your money. You have, it will make you go to, make, to, to study. It will make you to practice. So pay first. Without paying for this kind of test, without taking this test, don't waste your time. Ernest, I'm looking for a scholarship. I'll ask the question, have you taken the test? If you haven't, why are you trying to go to heaven and you don't want to die? That's my question to you. That's how you are supposed to do. Take the English test. Yes, I know there are some universities that can give you a waiver. Some of the universities they might have, don't have. But if you are in a competition, don't wait for the sympathy. Don't wait until Ronaldo is injured, uh, somebody is injured in order to win the game. You need to prepare yourself. That's why African teams cannot win the World Cup. Because we are going to prepare there and we are waiting. What group am I in? Is this the group of death? German doesn't care what group he is. You have to prepare on your own. Whatever opponent come to you, don't prepare and hope the group of death you want to in the group of death. No. Just be yourself competent, compete. Because let's say you and I, we are playing for the same university. That university, let's say they, doesn't, they don't have the requirement. Or you are going to ask for the waiver, they give you the waiver. But for me, I did the exam and you have 100 out of 120. So, obviously, they are going to take me. We have the same qualifications. I did the test. You ask for, for the waiver. Or, they don't want the test, but I want extra money to take the test. So, they take me over you. And sometimes, University A can have that. For instance, George Mason, for instance, they don't, have, they don't require that test for PhD in conflict resolution, for instance. But for you, you studied physics. How that help you if the University of Conflict Resolution doesn't have that requirement? So you need to prepare. If they give the waiver, that's good. But you need to prepare ready for the war. You cannot go to the forest hunting and the lion comes and you hope maybe the lion will miss you. 
Why are you doing that? You need to go there, you are full, maybe with your bomb, whatever it is, just bullets, whatever it is. You need to have things of that nature ready, fully equipped for the operation. That's how you make be competitive. There is no sympathy. They want the test you have. Without the test, your application is incomplete. You need to have a complete application. So take the damn test. Without the test, don't waste my time. I'm applying for a scholarship. Go and take the test. Without the test, you'll be saying, oh, this university, they just favor favoritism. They are tribalism. They are, don't want African. Africans, I'm African too. I got a scholarship. Because why? I took the English professional test. I took a GRE. And I applied 25 universities. So if you are thinking about that, go ahead and just say they are racist or they are just discriminatory. The, the one who are going to take this, this test, they get scholarships. People in India or China, they prepare for this test even for a full year. And you are just there, just eating, uh, just eating rice and just waiting for hope like they, they are going to give you the waiver. This is the war. You need to be full equipped, not waiting for the sympathy of the guy and on another end of the line will miss you. No. So this we are talking about English profession test. Please, please, please go and take this test as soon as possible. Remember, this test, they expire after two years. After two years, they're going to expire. So when you are going to take, you are using 210 or 240 for, 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 the, for the British version. Remember, after two years, it's going to expire. So take the test and make sure you apply so many universities so that you can get it. Because if it expires, you don't benefit from it. And it doesn't matter which one you take, whether it's British or American. You can take the American version, you, are, you go to Britain. You can take a Brit British version, you can go to America. You can go to Germany, to other countries. So these are just the world two main exams. There are other exams, but these are the two main. So each university, they will require either of the two. So it's up to you which one you prefer. In the end, you need to prepare. They're testing the same thing. They are testing proficiency. They are not testing how smart you are, your intelligence level, things of that nature. So go and pay the exam and take the exam as soon as possible. And all the best in looking and finding scholarships. Scholarship is not easy to get, but if you follow the principles and the procedures, it's a guarantee to get a scholarship.